Amateur setup going. What's that called? Alfie, mate. Or Alfred, if he's been a pretty. <laughs> what people listen on average. And it's weird, man. If we send it out on YouTube, though, that'd be sick, man. Well, it? that's the thing. That's why I wanted to do it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to Link do. Link it in the description and say it's on other platforms yeah, as well. Yeah. Is that your biggest following, YouTube, at the minute? It's Instagram, but Instagram's a bit pathetic. I'm just stopping me going on my phone. Hey? It's stopping me going on my phone now. Have you got him trained? In. Yeah. Oh, I guess the um, yeah. If she hasn't, if she doesn't, Look. <laughs> if she doesn't get attention, yeah, yeah. What it a is boy. Mate, he's actually he's the left handed. Is that recording? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. What I was saying is, I like podcasts so much because you got Instagram, which is just a little playground. Yeah. And you can put on your little sixty second fucking entertainment clips. Can you think about any Instagram account you follow? Yeah. You're not really following it for information, are you? You're not really not following really, it no. to like hero worship anyone or think, oh, this guy's great. Or you just follow it, generally speaking. I don't, I don't know about you, but I just follow all like the, the meme girls. pages, gym girls, <laughs> all that shit. And, and, and YouTube's like, although the, the videos are longer on YouTube, there still has to be some kind of entertainment value, in my opinion. Yeah. But podcasts, you sort of, people can get to know you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and the like, amount of content that it gives out as well. Yeah, exactly, because you're not taking time out of people's day to listen to it. Yeah. Whereas YouTube, Instagram's a bit different because you're just scrolling through and you can be at work like, oh, there's a funny clip. That's yeah. what Instagram is to me. Mm -hmm. YouTube's like TV, someone's actually taking time out, sitting down, <laughs> watching it. But podcasts, you can, you can actually sort of, people get to know you because it's like an hour and, or two hours, it doesn't matter how long. Yeah. That's, so that's why we're sat here, really, isn't it? Yeah. Jack. And it's a good job as Jack well that we are filming it. this so that people can see your dog getting one if at first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. First one I've ever filmed. Yeah. On two cameras, two microphones over here. It's about as technology advanced as I'm going to fucking get. Can I just say, thanks for having me down. I proper appreciate this. No, it's sound. This is proper Yeah, cool. no. Well, we were, what was the, the crap was we were meant to play golf. And we decided that golf shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was, we had a little chinwag over the phone last night, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we realised we were sort of motor mouthing a bit. So we thought, and again, this is a problem with video. Yeah. Is I had envisioned that we were going to play a few holes, mm -hmm. and once we sort of chat in and the camera's over there, you're fiddling around, is we'll probably get into a really in depth chat and it'd be some good shit. Mm. Obviously, it'd be the bollocks, and everyone would want to listen to it, <laughs> and we wouldn't have captured it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is again, you get that opportunity with a podcast to do. Cause Even like having spoke in your kitchen this morning, we've missed some good stuff that I wish exactly. we kind of got film already. So this is what I say to my mate all the time. I was like, I'm like, mate, we get off the phone and we're like, that should have been a podcast. Yeah, number one golden rule in life: all best conversations take place in kitchens. It's true. Whether it be four in the morning and you're off your head. It's or, true. It's funny, isn't it? Isn't it? How, how crazy is that? It's oh, just an environment in the morning off your head. Yeah, <laughs> so true. <laughs> God, I've, I've conjured up so many fucking like business opportunities, plans, and like life goals in the kitchen. Yeah. Funny enough, as well, actually, I think my best videos I've ever done have been in the kitchen. Mm. I like your 25 minute ones when you walk into a golf course. They're my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fucking not. <laughs> no, they are not. They're no one's favourites, man. They're not even my favourites. <laughs> That's just why I need to do some shit. Fuck it. Um, so, why are you here? Because I think people have generated a perception about you that I cool. want to try and change. All right, yeah. I don't sure. know whether you're with that. Oh, mate, I don't, yeah, let's go. But for there's it. some what people that, that haven't dove into your content as much as I have, and I think you're a different person to what people think you are. Yeah, I'd say so, but um, a lot of the, again, that's what I say about Instagram, YouTube, yeah. uh, and podcasts. It's like, well, podcasts, uh, if you actually want to get, get to know someone, no, no one's ever going to look at my Instagram and I think, Oh, I know him. No one's going to look at your Instagram and think, oh, I know. This is a whole culture. You're 23, I'm 24, we yeah. live in. Of how like rotten have you ever felt about yourself because your mate's on holiday and he's posting hol holiday Instagram yeah. pictures? Yeah. And it's probably one of their mates that you don't know really well mm. and you think he's like probably smashing it at life. Yeah. Whereas in reality, he's just posting a few holiday pics yeah. and he's going back to his normal 9 to 5 on Monday. Yeah. And, and he's sat in his hotel room because he's too pissed to go out wherever he is. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There's a lot of that shit. But yeah, I didn't realise that was um, the intention or yeah, whatever. No, 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 no,
the PJ and stuff. Obviously, I don't want to get political, but yeah. the the PJ and the journey and all that stuff. I just think someone should have always done it because for start some funny shit kicks off in the pro mm -hmm. shop, and and it's so relatable. Yeah, it's untrue. Like I, I if there's ever like a pro shop meme or a pro shop video yeah. or secret uh, secret assistant pro yes, on twitter what an account on that yeah like, i think that's fucking great yeah. but and like we were talking about the niche earlier it's only kind of us that get it because we've been in that situation i guess so so we'll, we'll never like get out to a million people but for the three four thousand people that it gets out to we get it so much don't that's we? so true i guess it's one of them like unless you're working in there so i would think like creatively like is there a spin that you can put on it to like yeah. make it from the consumer's point of view as well yeah do you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but that's make, that's where you have fun with it yeah make a video like what it's like to walk into a pro shop yeah because i've been in some situations when you walk in it and i think some pros that i've seen are the most miserable people on earth yeah yeah and you yeah. get in there and you think is, has anyone died this morning yeah can i have a pack of teas please man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you know. I mean, um, there is plenty of that, and obviously I've had some choice words to say about it in the past. <laughs> Have you had uh, really? No, nah, not really. Not. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it is what it is. You know what yeah. it's like uh, when you work in the industry and that. But it's the same as anything. It's the same as, you know, like even retail. You walk into a shop, like, you can genuinely tell if someone, people live to, like, make your day. Yeah. People live to just give you, like, absolutely unnecessary like unapologetic phenomenal service <laughs> you know yeah. and, and that shit genuinely you walk out of the shop whatever it is whatever it is you yeah. bought whether it's food or, or clothing yeah. you come out like wow what a nice lady yeah, yeah. Well, what a nice bloke yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely lovely bloke <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah. um, and that's have you ever been to the States? No, never. Well, funny story, I once went to go to Florida and you know I have to fill in an ESTA application. Yeah. I filled it wrong. <laughs> so I couldn't go. And it said, have you lived in America before? And I would do it on my iPad, you know, the scroll up and down things. I scrolled it to yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever been outside South Yorkshire. Did you book your flights? Yeah. You I got my money back, thankfully. Oh. I sold it to someone. I lost about 200 quid, but I think from a grant I got 800 quid back. What, so. just from slipping up on the floor? How mad is that? Did you get, you didn't get to, obviously you didn't get to the airport? And, no, no, no. Right. So I meant to go down to British Embassy to then do an interview, but <laughs> it was only four weeks until holiday and it was six weeks to get booked in Embassy. <laughs> so absolutely I was like, lads, uh, yeah. can't come on this holiday now, as it happened. <laughs> well, mate, had you have gone to Florida, and right, here's the thing. Apparently, uh, people working in industry services, like in restaurants and bars and stuff mm -hmm. like that, they are basically, they're on a, a, a shit wage. Yeah. But there's a huge tipping culture in America. Anyway, for whatever reason, whether it's financial gain or, or whether they just genuinely love to be there, mm -hmm. there it is up in question because you're not sure because the service is that good. Yeah. Me and my brother were like, these guys and girls, they, they just love it. Yeah. They just absolutely love it. Now, whether it's because we're you know, tipping them and everyone else is tipping them, yeah. maybe that's it, but we didn't really care because it was that immersive, yeah. the whole thing. And, Disney World was fucking hell. We just felt like, you know, two kids with like daddy and mummy issues because we never went before. Yeah. We went there and like everyone else was like families and stuff like that. We didn't even know we booked a hotel at Disney World. Uh, and there's this woman who was telling us about this, this like Disney theme park ride and she was like, it was that good, I cried. <laughs> and we were just there like, whoa, you right? this is amazing. We're, yeah. like, <laughs> we're like, well, we had to do that ride after yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And she just loved Disney. I bet restaurants are such a different experience over there mm. as well, aren't they? Because here it's kind of get food and go, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It Whereas is. there, but it's like an experience, isn't it? It is, mate. It, it sounds ridiculous, but there's this hotel lodge called Disney's Animal Kingdom, and it's Africa themed. Yeah. Mate, on the second night, I, honestly, until one of the guests said, Oh, I live wherever in Florida. Mm. We genuinely thought we were in Africa. <laughs> that's, how, that's how sad it is. But that's how immersive it yeah. is. That's how yeah. fucking crazy it is. You're that's just mad, that it? immersed in it. And, and I guess like people like that, they're just that immersed in the wrong side of shit. You yeah. know, people, when you go into a shop or, you know, whether it's a pro shop or retail or restaurant mm -hmm. and they're just hating life. But yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? It's shit, isn't it? You know, it's, it's tough. And you know what, man? I'll actually never forget never forget this it's this one ride in Florida um, everyone's this happy go Larry again so immersive phenomenal service this one ride 
the King Kong ride. <laughs> like, <laughs> they have these people, in, you go and you, you scan your ticket, and they're, you know, they're that over the top there that they actually clap you when you're coming off the ride. It's oh really my weird. God. It's amazing, though. That's on par with people that clap when an aeroplane lands. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. You know, it's cringy, but at the same time. Because I said on par as well. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's well, carry on. <laughs> um, and I was like, um, yeah, hey, I was like, she was scanning me ticket. I was like, how you doing? You all right? She was like, she smiled. She was like, yeah, living the dream, like that. And I was like, whoa. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Well, no, she said it in a really sarcastic, as oh, in like, yeah, right, as yeah. in like, yeah, yeah, I'm living the dream. And then that's, and I felt, wow, well, I just felt really bad for her. And then the whole sort of thing, that immersive, yeah, like, almost culture that you feel that you're in, and of this crazy good service is like, almost, the, the, the bubble's been burst, but yeah. you're like, wow, actually, maybe they don't want to be here, yeah. maybe they are just doing it for tips, yeah. like, and this, this woman was not living on. Yeah. It's probably more individualistic than we think, isn't it? Like, you'll have some people that genuinely do love it, and some people that are really good actors, and... Such as life, yeah. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Such as the same old things, same as your... Yeah. Same as your golf car, you know, it's, 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 it's all... Again, it's all how it was, and yeah. all how it is. It's, I was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I've been exactly the same in every fucking job, to be honest. Do you think, you know, because of the amount of people that we come into contact with on a daily basis, we've become quite good bullshit monitors? Yeah. Because we get a lot of waffle, don't we, with some mm. people that we talk to, but then we get others that it's like... There were people that I still to this day look forward to seeing when I'm at work, and people that I dread coming into the show. Absolutely, man. But then even then you have to be kind and courteous, don't you? You can't just be like, what's this not bad one? Yeah, and from that point of view, I think like it's really valuable. Like You learn, you learn so much shit yeah. in, in terms of like having to pull up with shit. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, everyone's got to, got to do it, everyone's got to pull up with it, and everyone continues to do it. It's not, you know, life ain't fucking easy at the yeah. bottom line being. And, yeah, the, you know, I, Dave, the, the ex um, bin man, he used to come into the pro shop, he used to make my day every time. Yeah. Yeah. He was so good. I, and I've always had the time of day for him. Um, and with others, I guess it's certainly towards the back end of my illustrious career, <laughs> I was a bit, a bit of a dick too, because just because I was, but mm -hmm. I was only reflecting my own mood on that yeah, day. That's you it, know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then it only takes one little thing of, of one question mm -hmm. or one bullshit question that you get a lot, and yeah. if it just gets you on the wrong day, mm -hmm. you, you might react, mm -hmm. and, and then that person's going to think you're a massive tool because yeah. you reacted to such a small yeah. thing. It's so hard to extract your emotions from that situation, isn't it? Oh. And give a really neutral answer. The worst one I ever had, you know, was. I've seen these tees online for one pound thirty, the one pound fifty in here. And I, I didn't handle the situation as well as what I could have. So what I said to him, well, I'll tell you what then, give me one pound thirty, I'm gonna keep these for five days. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, because you know when you order them online, you don't get them straight away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so and good. And the guy were like, they were like, what a knob. Oh, but that's so what you but, wanna say. Yeah, I know. And we, we spoke about this off camera before we started. We need yeah. to make a video of what we, what we wanna say compared to what we should say. But for me, if I were to get that, and if, I mean, for starters, I never would say that. Oh, it's just not. It's ridiculous, isn't it? 20 pence. But we know what it's like to be on the other side of the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from that point of view, you've got the empathy. Mm -hmm. But, like, again, if, if, if someone said that to me, why well, it takes five days to come, I would just feel like a massive tool. Yeah. I'd be like, man, you're Why did I say that? I'll just yeah. give him 150. So what did he do? Give him 150. He's <laughs> 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 so really, it's yeah. the right move. Yeah. But it's true, like, I. I used to have aggro with, with, with discounts and stuff. And, All the time. You know, um, I don't want to put you in a position where you've got a uh, reveal or say or yeah. but at my club, there was like member favouritism. Right. Basically, the, the people who spent more money, um, you know, got treated a bit better. Yeah. This, this bloke got to store his fucking great big monstrous electric trolley mm -hmm. in the back shed because he bought it with us, it was one of them Stuart two, two grand jobbies. Oh, yeah. And because he bought it, the manager's like, yeah, well, you know what, it's all right, because he's got a Porsche, you can't fit it in the boot, you can put it in the, in the shop, yeah. for, you know, for the whole time. And he used to come in and like, he, we used to give him the keys to the shed so he could go put it down in fuck himself. Yeah. And then, and then one day, he decided his back wasn't good, mm -hmm. even though he was playing golf, <laughs> and, and then we had to put it in the shed for him, mm -hmm. but then it never stopped. And then it was a sense of entitlement yeah. from this guy. Yeah. And I just felt so belittled every time he came yeah. and it's like... He's got a big leverage, Anton. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just felt, 
I hated that so much. I hate that. I really resented that yeah. to the point where I just bring in his muddy trolley, muddy trolley, and just put like it in the shop. It. Yeah. Just put it in the shop. He wouldn't even say anything. It's like, all right, I'm. I guess I'm taking that to the shed then. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I feel like the people that I like are the people that we've built up a relationship and they don't ask for discount. I feel much more inclined to give them money same. off than people who come in and say, "What's what's my price on this thing?" The same. Ten quid more than everyone else makes and not like you. But so, then sometimes you're under the pressure of like, you say if you get a walk in, mm -hmm. he's not a member like that, and he's dead sound and he, he's no trouble. He doesn't want to ask for discount. You're in a position where you're like, man, I really want to give this guy a discount, yeah. but. I've given X, Y, Z all that discount. I sort of like the margins need to go, yeah. and then you know I've charged people who I really want to give discount for whack, yeah. and, and it's just annoying. It, but I guess yeah. it's just the nature of the mm. the nature of how it is. I thought it's great. That, it's crazy though, isn't it? When you when you sell something to someone full price and you feel like you've not done them a good deal, mm. that's a crazy situation to be yeah. in. Because it's like, well, that's what they pay anywhere else. I don't know why we feel as though we should get them cheaper. <laughs> you know, we go to Asda and they go to the till yeah. and they scan it in, and the lady goes. You know, you're such a nice person, you can have this for one pound instead of one pound ten. Yeah, like, have a free bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just take them anyway when you get to the yeah, self-service. Yeah, yeah, not that I'm a thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that I, I always pay for my five pounds. Yeah, it's the old fake scam. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you're so bang on. So bang on. It's, I guess it's just people, it's just navigating. Yeah. You, you learn more about people than you do. Definitely. I feel quite else. thankful that I'm in a position where I get to speak to so many different kinds of people on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. But that other side, I, I don't. <laughs> I was just sat in a room like a new world like said it's yeah, a video. Yeah. It's, it's a weird one, man, and it's the same with coaching, really. I think you, uh, I was always told this before I'd done it. It's like you'll, you'll learn way more about people than you ever do about coaching. Yeah. Um, and that couldn't be any more true mm. from my point of view. Best coaches I've ever come into contact with are the ones that are better communicators with people, not necessarily what they know about golf. Yeah. But they do always tend to have a really good knowledge, but it's the more people, people yeah. that have. And they just really care, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And that's you know, that's the biggest you know, I've spoken about this quite a bit, you know, with, mm -hmm. with, with people before and it doesn't really matter what you're doing, it's it, you know there's that saying in it, people don't care how much you know, they just want to know how much you care. Yeah, you said that on a video over there, I love that. Yeah. That's such a good saying. It is true. Yeah. Um, you know, I've heard that, you know, countless amounts of books. Yeah. And and, and the classic analogy is is the doctor one mm -hmm. where it's like, What what do you want? Do you want a, a doctor who knows everything? Yeah. But it doesn't really isn't really bothered about getting the info for two years, or yeah. you want someone that doesn't maybe doesn't know as much but really cares about getting you better. You know, yeah. that's and that's the difference. Yeah. And that's what I feel it is like with coaching. Um and I guess, yeah, really perception wise it's if, to touch back on that, it's sort of like well people just think you're, you're a blibbering idiot, they don't care but you, the bottom line being is you, you don't do all this shit if you don't care about what you do. Yeah, totally to, right. To be quite frank mate, I don't really you don't do a great deal of or speaking or or anything like that. You know, I'm I'm I'd rather be on my own. But if you say to me, you know, eight months ago, oh, you could do a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could ramble on for seventeen and a half minutes now mm -hmm. uh, and just go. I'd be like, no, you you you're, yeah, you're yeah. talking shit, mate. Yeah. I, I I can't do that. But yeah. but once you find something that you actually care about, and mm -hmm. then you can just go. Yeah. You can fire away on all cylinders. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's mad, isn't it? Mm. Uh -huh. What are you saying anyway? So, so I've I've got a few questions for you if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, no, no, no please. Uh, yeah, for, for, for first one, I want to start with. I don't know if you can talk about that, so I might have to edit it out. Could you? Could edit it on that? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> far away. So there was my mum brought this to me attention that there were a guy that sued the PGA or trying to sue the PGA because of a couple of uh, exam situation. Is that you? No. That was someone else. Yeah. So let's talk about this then. There were a guy <laughs> that wrongfully. <laughs> He, he failed a few exams and he genuinely thought that the PGA was trying to do him. Right. So he's filed to get a lawsuit against him and he's like trying to sue the PGA for a wrongful, you know, exam or dodgy mark. You know, I don't know what the full ins and outs were, but that were in real situation. Yeah, what and that's going on now? It was going on about six months ago. My mum read it in paper and she said, what about this? And I just failed an exam and I went, do you know what yeah. I might do the same? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, if anyone's going to get sued, it'll be me. <laughs> No, genuinely, I'm not a sewer, so like... Um, That's crazy. I didn't know what sewing were a thing in this country. No, but I guess not, but uh, that was a... Um, I guess, I'm not sure how much I can touch on this, but... Yeah, um, if we have to see past it, it's all right. But. Yeah, I mean, no, I'll just say the surface of it, but in the, in the States, mm -hmm. some advice that I get, did get from a CEO of a, a big, big dick company... You're getting around now, aren't you? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. not in a good way, unfortunately. <laughs> um, he, he's, you know... He, 
without sounding like a, you know, or, or me, but you, you, you did say, oh, you know, I like your stuff. You said, like, I want to say the stuff you're saying, but I can't, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but he is quite out there mm -hmm. with his stuff, and he's had lawsuits left, right, and centre. Um, and something he did say was, like, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do or how to go about it, but all I am going to tell you is the bigger you get, the more people will want to come after you. Yeah, and, and that's something that, you know, has had to play on my mind quite yeah, a lot. Yeah. Naturally, you yeah. know. Well, nature it, of your content as well. Exactly. Because from the start, people have been trying to take you down, really, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I suppose in, not in the comment you. section, yeah. Yeah, but they've just been a bit, um, well, not supportive. Yeah, which is sound, you know, it's, yeah. it's fair play. You know, it's not like I was, I've been supportive of everyone else, so, yeah. so all, all power to them. Yeah. It's fair play. It swings and roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, at, at the end of the day, it'd be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd be lying if there wasn't some tactful, uh, tactful friction there anyway. Mm. You know, yeah. if, if people are talking about it, whatever they're talking about it. Just out of curiosity, then, what's your like to dislike ratio at the minute? You know what? Uh, I'm not. I'm not just saying this, but I don't pay too much attention to it. Right. But it's not good. Right. It, it, no, I mean, it's, it's still good, but it's not good if you look at other yeah. ones. Because videos that I watch, I don't know whether it's just a case of me steering clear of the ones that tend to be a bit more controversial, but I tend to see more positive than negatives. It, 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 like in the comments and, and likes to dislikes and stuff like that. Yeah, no, well, yeah, you are right. Yeah, generally speaking, they're, they're more, I suppose, likes than dislikes, but because we're, as human beings, we're so fucking hardwired hmm. to pick up on the negative, um, you know, this is something I've had to contend with personally. Is, hmm. I love the negative ones, genuinely. I don't just say that cause, uh, to, to act big dick, like, oh, you know, I love them. I, love, <laughs> I, I do love them because they, they do, it just gives you that sort of, that drive to prove everyone wrong, yeah. sort of thing, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and they are funny. You, you, Some I, of them are genuinely funny. Mate, I cannot, I can't not laugh at stuff like oh. that. The, the, Saying that I'm going to be Crossfield's new fluffer is fucking, <laughs> mate, that's excellent. Yeah, you know, that's so good. No, How can I not laugh at that? You yeah. know, I'm, I like that humour. I I really do like the like I said to you, I like dark humour. Mm. It's just how I am. It's yeah. In Frankie Boyle stand up and stuff yeah. like that, it's great for yeah. me. Well, Ricky you, Gervais, brilliant. Like, yeah, Gervais is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. You are like the dark prince of YouTube, but I don't know if that's a, a phrase that you coined yourself or it's been. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you okay, if you sort of. You fall into some kind of alter ego thing, don't yeah, you? Like yeah. uh, a dark night. <laughs> and I, I was like, sort of uh, viewed myself as some kind of golf saviour, like. <laughs> but even with like like Gervais and, and Frankie Boy, I think you need people like that. I'm not saying I am that person, just to balance out the whole the world of this political correctness stuff, and which is really prominent in golf as well. So it was just yeah. more of like a. I just wanted, to, you know, I, not just wanted. To, I want to just look at the industry and think, fuck you. Oh, I just have a laugh, man. Yeah, pick some balls in, because no yeah. one's done it before, have they? No. In no. I've always thought it away for so long, people were just like, this is what golf is, and no one's opposing it, no one's challenging it. Yeah. But it's like, this is what, and it, it's like, with anything, you don't think, this is the run of the mill stuff, do you? Yeah. Like, when it comes to, I know I don't, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but you think there's always. Okay, I mean, I'll. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to, like. <laughs> we, we could, like, two hours, maybe a separate time, yeah, or something yeah. like that, but, mate. Something that won't make the hour. It's like, with everything, though, you have to question everything, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And no one were. Yeah. It's. There's this whole um, linear thinking, you know, mm. this is what a mate of mine was describing it to yeah. me yesterday. He said, looking at something on the surface and thinking, uh, a very objective yeah, way of looking at it, yeah, it would be so. For someone to look at something like that, they might look at it and think, "Well, this guy's a prick," mm -hmm. and that, that would be. I think um, without being too disrespectful, I think some do. You know, with a first oh, glance at that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, plenty. Yeah. You know, and 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 they and they always will, and that's not that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's it does. That's just how it is. Um, but a non-linear way of looking at it might be someone like you to to think. Uh, and this isn't to put a, a case forward for me not being a prick. I always say I'm a prick, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, uh, but a non-linear way of looking at someone who you think might be a prick mm -hmm. would be to think, oh, well, is this either for a reason or is there something more to it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's a, a less, that way of looking at it's yeah. more of a outside. But, and I've always, uh, not always, but, you know, you have to exercise those muscles, but I've always sort of, yeah. Try to not. I don't really like dislike anyone in, in the world. It's, it, I'm not, and again, that's not even like a peace treaty thing. Yeah, yeah. That's just a non-linear way of looking at it. I don't. 
plus I read a lot of psychology and when you read a lot of that it's, it, it blows your head because yeah. it's sort of like when you're reading like sort of causalities and reasons for why people mm -hmm. are so fucked up you're like you can't help but empathise with basically everyone it's like yeah. people throw around the word hate it's like yeah. well, they have to do a question and say why why do you hate him and yeah. then they go uh because he made a bad video, it, like, well, it made free content for you to watch. And yeah, you watched yeah, it, yeah. and you still hate him. It's <laughs> like, yeah, but I, I don't agree with him. Well, say that then. Yeah. Don't say you hate him, you clearly don't, do you? Yeah, and, that, and that's obviously, that, that brings the obvious, um, like the cross seal thing. But, yeah. But that is, again, that's, that's for me to learn. Mm. Uh, it's for people to respond to that, of me saying hello, you're all right. Um, and for, and for people to think that I was genuinely going to spit in his face and slap him on the head. Um, <laughs> it's that would have gone viral. Yeah, it would have, yeah, straight up. If I really wanted the views, that's what I would have done, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm um, so glad you didn't, though. Yes, well... the amount of respect that you're giving me is, is something that I would totally do as well. I mean, I'm a bit of a fan. He's someone that I like our videos I watch out for because being a coach and what he does, yeah. Yeah, I think he, he's better at teaching coaches than he probably is people, you know, with the content that he gives. And I think that's his thing. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's his thing, like, mm -hmm. um, again, this is a whole other sort of topic, but what, um, I spoke about it yesterday with my mate, on, on a podcast actually, is what your thing is might not be what you think your thing is, yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean, it's a strange yeah. way of looking at it, but my, uh, and that's where I've got to learn whereby, you know, people looking at that, the people might not look at things the same way I look at them, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, I call them cunt, yeah. and, 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 and that's like, <laughs> you know, do I regret doing yeah. it? Like, absolutely not. Yeah. Should I have done it? No, that's a different question. Should yeah. I have done it? No, absolutely not. Yeah. I should not have done that. <laughs> I should not have done that. Such <laughs> you a know, rogue. Because I'm the, I'm the person who um, always says it's about humour. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't very humourful. Mm. So that was just... It, but, but to me, looking at that non-linearly, it's just yeah. someone who made a shit joke. Mm. So, you know, like, it ruins comedians' careers. I know. You know, like, that type of laughs. I was just going to say that, mate. He made a really shit joke, yeah. and it ruined his career. Yeah. So where's the point of, like, well, you know, so for me, it was sort of like a given, like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to shake my hand and say, look, yeah. I've got a twisted sense of humour and that, and it was just, mm -hmm. yeah, sound. But I then, it was foolish of me to think that people wouldn't see it the same way. Yeah. That, that's what I'm trying to say. But then the funny comments are great, so it's... Yeah. And <laughs> bottom line being is it's the unexpected and, and people are fucking I say people, a few people are talking about it, but it's like yeah, it's a strange one man. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna check if you can Yeah, crack on. on. So you know that with Crossfield then? That was yeah, at yeah. the uh, PGA show. Yes. Uh, yeah, what yeah. else did you learn from the PGA show? Because I know that I, I bet that was just a mega experience, weren't it? Yeah it was mate. Um for starters it was just good to fucking get out there. Mm -hmm. Um it's good to have some downtime because yeah, I've been going pretty hard. It was good to meet a load of people within the industry. Mm -hmm. What did you meet? What were your highlights? Um, I, I, I don't want to sort of lick their ass, but the long drivers were great, man. Yeah. And, um, did you meet James Zalowski? He did witness me do a no look. Decent. I did well, try well, and look at the No, it was average. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he wasn't impressed at all. Um, you can't only get one take with them. Yeah, me. that's the trouble. You know, it's, it's hero or villain territory. Is um, it harder? To hit a golf ball without looking at it or looking at it? Depends. On what? It depends on you. Right. Depends on um, what sort of psychological <laughs> barriers you've got in your head, you know. Yeah. I went through a long period of time where I couldn't look at the ball mm -hmm. and strike it well, so I just used yeah. to play not looking. Um, but now, I'm over that. So now, generally speaking, I don't really play not looking. Uh -huh. So for, for me now, it would be harder to play not looking. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a bit of like a one and them. It's a mm -hmm. weird one. but. Yeah, States was great. You learn, you know, a lot, really. Mm. It's good to meet some people I'd spoke to a lot online, yeah. for example. Do you do a lot of that? Because I'm, I'm kind of grateful that you reached out to me. I know a couple of my mates have got in touch with you, actually, as well. Right. A guy called Lee Hopwood. Does yes. That about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke yeah, to him a bit. He told me that he's messaged you a few times. Like, yeah, so sound guy. Big golf so. curve. Massive golf curve. He's perv. good, though, isn't he? He's all right. He will tell you that he's better than what he is. All right. I thought he's plus handicap, though, isn't he? He used to be. I don't know if he's. I don't know. He'll have definitely told you that he's a plus handicap. <laughs> <laughs> when he comes out, back up to like two or three. Yeah, he'll definitely be listening to this as well. <laughs> We've got such a strange uh, uh, relationship meaning because I absolutely think he's mint off at course, but of course I hate him. I hate yeah. him. He's beat me that much over years. I can't stand him. Yeah, it's not on there. It's, 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 it's just not on. <laughs> it's not on at all. How pet is that? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I mean, I've spoke about it briefly before, but yeah, I guess it, it is eye-opening in terms of, I've said it before and I've said it to you just in the kitchen, I was quite surprised by how many people um, recognise me, and that's not, uh, again, that's not to give it big dick, that's, mm -hmm. but that's people within the industry. Not, yeah. I'm not talking about passers-by, yeah. yeah, I'm not like... Um, you know, like I said, I've got a small footprint online, it's no... Well, this is an interesting thing that we spoke about before, because golf is such a, like, niche yes. area, a, like, small market. We were speaking about going on residential for training stuff. Near enough, everyone that we talk to, if you watch daily golf content online, will know who you are. G given the nature of what it is. Definitely, yeah, yeah because yeah. everyone, it's, it's so inclusive, everyone's in on it, aren't they? Yeah. Whereas if you're not playing golf, I don't think many people have heard of you, would you? Well, absolutely not. Would you say that, what, 9% of your audience I'd say, I'd, I'd say oh, way more than that. I'd say basically the whole lot, apart from my mates who were on Instagram before I started yeah. doing it, you know. Yeah. It's, um, what was your account like before you started doing all golf stuff? I didn't do it, it was just travel. I noticed your WhatsApp picture, you're getting a big Playboy. Well, that was from about three years ago. That's like and that's, GoPro that, on a boat. Yeah, shirtless. that was travel. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't got any other pictures to update it with. Mm. I don't want to put a golf picture on there. I've just got a text <laughs> off Leo Wood. I'm not going to read it. Brilliant. That's Probably mad. Dropped his only cat to plus one. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Listening live somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, fuck, lost a train of thought. Um, golf shit. Golf stuff. Yeah, reckon not. Uh, and, and that sort of annoyed me. Uh, not in the respect that, you know, oh, why well, I didn't notice who I am, but because uh, I always wanted to swim against the current mm -hmm. of golf, I sort of like, you know, doing all the all the piss tape videos, I'm taking the piss out of people in golf mm -hmm. and who are in that sort of like community of yeah. online YouTubers and Instagram and stuff like that. Like, I wanted to separate myself from them and, yeah. and trying to separate myself. I actually just become a part of it. Yeah, so yeah, that's strange, isn't it? So that's just me. That, that's uh, it's like, oh, bollocks. Your situation, though, were kind of born out of a big emotional thing, weren't it? Oh, yeah, what, a big chip on the shoulder, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 But then since then, I think your content's evolved to the point where you've got, you are, like you said, your own brand now. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, to, to whatever, you know, success or detriment that may be. <laughs> uh, only time yeah. will tell, but that's, that, that's, um, that is always how I wanted to yeah. do it. I think you, I, I, I firmly believe that business going forward is they're going to prefer to buy from people, and I, and I truly believe definitely. That I'll, yeah. I'll do myself favors in the long yeah. run rather than you know it's you know, again it's hard to say it without sounding fucking mm -hmm. narcissistic or something, but yeah. and that but that gets thrown around loosely. But I I, I could have not easily because nothing in life is easy, but I could do sponsored stuff, I could have done that, mm -hmm. but from day dot I was like, I don't really want to, unless it was the right thing, yeah. I, 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 do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 totally. Um, you know, I'm in it for the long haul, so to speak, is what I'm trying to say, yeah. and, I, and I truly believe just being yourself yeah. is how you're going to do that, and, yeah. and if I'm trying to make a funny video, I, I'm not good at, like, dad jokes, I'm not good at, like, yeah. you know, I like dark humour. Yeah, and if it's I'm funnier though, isn't it? For me it is, yeah, you know, is, yeah. yeah, for me it is, but with that you're going to get a lot of shit, it's, yeah. that's just how it is. Yeah. I can't not expect it. I know. I know. It's, it's good fun. It's, it's, it's the one thing is, it's this, all this shit is good fun, and I always yeah. try and encourage I mean, I'm people. having a great time. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of but that's what I mean, it's, um, I fucking love it. I, I, I love um, people going after it and shit on yeah. YouTube. Just, just kind of for my audience then, I know we're like half an hour through and I should have introduced you at the start. But, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, apologising to your viewers who know who you are, but for my guys, can you just kind of give us a bit of a timeline as to kind of when you started, the big changing point I feel like you were in your golfing career, yeah. and then kind of where you are now. Yeah, good question. Um, so when it started, assistant pro, doing yeah. a PGA. Um, getting further down the track with that, I was trying to operate a startup business at the same time. Long story short, I couldn't do that and the PGA mm -hmm. it, it, together. Yeah. Um, basically, the PGA didn't allow for me to put my working hours into the business ones. Yeah. So just sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, with no, the no, PGA, no. you have to do I think thirty to thirty-five hours uh, associated with a golfing establishment. So Robert, Robin's trying to say that he wanted to branch out. Say, can he transfer those hours to his own startup business? They didn't allow he did that. No, they didn't. And and I, so I was a, I was a bit annoyed at that. But then at the same time, the startup was a was a flop anyway. Mm -hmm. It was my whole thing was I wanted to provide golf courses and pros, like I mentioned to you, social media services. And 
it, it ended up being right. I was putting in all this effort for a load of other people, and it was just like, well, why am I doing that? So I, I just pumped it into my own social media because someone gave me some cracking advice, and my old plan was to shout and scream and, and swear <laughs> <laughs> about coaches who I really believed in what they were doing, but given the nature of how I went about my business, I couldn't work with them. Yeah. And then it was like, right, well, I'll coach it. Um, and, I, and I was alright, I had a bit of a knack for it. And, and I actually, at that point in time, I thought I sort of found my, my calling and my niche. But given the nature of how I went about my stuff, it was very, it is, well, I guess, still very brash. It was, you know, like, for example, the, the whole swearing thing comes up in conversation quite a lot. Time. Yeah, it comes up in conversation a lot. It's, once everyone told me to stop swearing, at very, particularly in the early stages, that's when I knew I should swear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone was saying, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And there's that famous saying, if you want to do, if you want to do the same as everyone else, then do exactly what they say. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah, I'm gonna fucking swear more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I think I actually had that in my head because I was like, so, I, so when I watch my early videos now, it's just fucking an abundant amount of swear, <laughs> and and it's just I can't even watch that back. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, well, they. I was pissed off, not only at the PGA but in the, in the whole scenario, but almost at people saying, oh, just stop swearing. So I was like, you know what, I'll swear more. <laughs> um, and I guess that's just a fucking, probably just a negative personality trait of mine. <laughs> just wanting to like, yeah, fuck off. It's man. crazy, because I had a comment on an early video, we did a course vlog, and it's like, a member came up to me and he says, uh, I really don't appreciate you swearing. And he left a comment saying, you know, there's juniors and ladies watching this video. And I thought, do ladies and juniors not swear? Well, this is the thing for you personally. If you I'm know. trying to project my personality, I know it was my friend who swore and I didn't. I mean, it's like against the point, but I want to make content which I enjoy. And if that includes swearing, do you know what I mean? I think there is also defining that as well. And if, if, if there's any sort of, I guess, advice I could give, it's like, um, if I'm ever in a position to give advice, <laughs> is uh, do you want to be a, like, a junior coach? Mm. Do you, want to, do you want to coach That's kids? the thing that I do at the minute, predominantly. Okay, so, yeah. so this is the balancing act that I have to have. It's like I can't make videos swearing every other sentence, which I kind of want to do, mm. but at the same time, because I've got kids watching, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, so there, there, there's always that to contend with. Mm. I guess it depends on age groups as well, but, you know, the, the best sports coaches I had at school... They swear, don't they? They did swear, and yeah. you know what, man, like... Um, you know when you're a kid, mm. you look at grown-ups and you're like... They just don't know shit. Yeah. Because they don't. No. I, I know all grown ups, and I guess I keep arguing that we're grown ups now. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you put yourself, you think, oh yeah, you know, I, I was a teenager once. Oh, obviously you were, but not at this time. No. It's a completely oh, different era. You don't just know the score. 10 years, how much has it changed? Mate, everything. How much did you swear in this? Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kids swear just because they're not swearing at your kitchen table. Yeah. Just because you think little Johnny is, is this little angel who doesn't swear. Yeah. I'm telling you now, as soon as you drop him off yeah. at the school bus, he's swearing like the clappers to his mates because that's exactly what I was doing. Yeah. And, well, okay, is it the right or wrong thing? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it is right or wrong, but I know which one's more relatable. Yeah. Uh, but it's an integral part of English language, that's what I feel. <laughs> you only look in a dictionary, yeah. you know, like fuck and shit, and I don't even see words in a dictionary. Uh, probably, yeah. I would presume it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a great word. It's integral part, and you know if you ever want to put more emotion into a sentence, yeah. you would use a swear word, wouldn't you? You would, yeah. Like, if you were absolutely fuming about something, I would much rather say, I am fucking fuming. How much more of an impact does that have than... I'm my lip are turned. Well, all right, you get this right, okay, so if you want to get all gold from this. Mm -hmm. So, there's this whole thing that, uh, it's, it's no joke, man, psychologically speaking, like, people who swear generally are, have more honest traits, yeah. uh, are more honest people. Okay, let's look at Matt Kuchar. Oh. Yeah, now, he is, did he say, oh, turd, after a shot one? He says turd, he says <laughs> golly, he says darn, <laughs> he says all this stuff, okay, <laughs> and he is... Golf's little lover chart, you know, he's the perfect, Yeah. you know, if you could paint the image of the gentleman of the golf course. Are you going where I think you're going with it? Yes, I'm right, I am. Yeah. You know, it would be Matt Kuchar. Yeah. And he does, and he doesn't swear, and he's probably, you know, I think he's a man of God and all that. Not that's got anything to do with it. But, and then what happens? Yeah. I'm um, true colours, really. 1.2 million, I think he won't win it. Exactly. Yeah. And then he pays his caddy five grand. Yeah. And then he says after, to justify himself, yeah. The fact he, he should be happy with earning five grand in a week. Yeah. And it's like, I think people like Arnold Palmer and 
Ben Hogan. We out knowing him, you only get stories, don't you? But I think those two guys would have took an opportunity to change that bloke's life. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so trashy, isn't it? For a guy that's won millions already. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? They called it a PR nightmare. Mm -hmm. even, yeah. That's not a PR nightmare. No. That's not public fucking relations, mate. No. That's character that's nightmare. That's a personal relationship. That's nightmare, bad. Yeah. That's just a fucking all round nightmare. Yeah. And then he's come out and he's paid the caddy the full amount. Mate, that's not good enough. I, I would have paid him half the purse. Yeah. I would have paid him half Definitely. the purse after that scandal yeah. just to be like, wow, I can't believe it. Yeah. I, I'm all for like uh, retribution. Mm -hmm. You know, in this day and age, I don't think people get, to, you know, when people, particularly with like political correctness, mm -hmm. when people apologise now, it's almost just not good enough. It's no. like, well, you're still a prick. Mm -hmm. you know? My favourite was that Logan Paul apology. Did you ever see that? No. So, you know, when he did the forest scandal thing, yeah. filmed the guy that was like hanging in the forest, he did this big kind of drawn out. No idea, I think it was on Twitter first, and it was the most insincere thing that I've ever read in my life. Wow. And it's like, he's, he's got like 25 million followers come under such backlash, and then he just brought out something that were just like, so wishy-washy, do you know what I mean? And you can tell. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you can it's tell such a whether it's insincere or not. Um, abs absolutely. And for, for, him to, for him to do that in the first place, look, you know, well, who's setting the better example then? Mm. Target when he says, fuck after a shot. Yeah. Or <laughs> and it's got a TW foundation that's like millions yeah, and millions of kids and stuff. Actions like. speak louder than words at yeah. the end of the day and like look, the, the the things that your kids your kids and your kids, <laughs> are, ex your kids. Yeah, are exposed to online, mate, I've got I've got a rude awakening for you if you think it's just yeah. some golf YouTube channel with a bit of swearing. Did you see that Momo stuff that's been knocking around? What's that? Where in the, I don't I think it's been kind of dismissed now, it wasn't a real thing, it a bit of a what's it called? Not like a myth, but you know, like a bit of a hoax. During an episode of Peppa Pig on YouTube, there'd be a thing, like a really scary face that'd come up saying like, this is Momo, uh, I'm going to come and kill you tonight. Oh wow. And if you don't cut yourself, like, I'm going to come and kill you. And the kids are watching Peppa Pig and this comes up halfway through and it carries Whoa. on. So he's trying to transmit that crazy message. I can't believe it's in this, it's on Facebook and stuff Whoa. like that. How mad is that? And that were a thing that's kind of been viral over the last month or so. <laughs> the internet's fucked. It's just the weirdest place ever. <laughs> it is. How, how disturbed have you got to be to produce something like that? Oh, fuck me. So you, you're balls deep in a bit of pepper, and you're thinking, wow, he's got himself in a very good situation. <laughs> Dad's like having a great time with him. And then all of a sudden, this moment pops up, and it's like, you've got to cut your son. That was like, scary what? shit out of me. You know what, man? I was, I was terrified when I said it. You remember when Steve Irwin died back in the day? Yeah, yeah. I remember as a kid, I went on YouTube and I Googled. Steve Irwin died, mm -hmm. and obviously it was a, you know, I thought, like, shut up, do I want to watch this? And then there was a video, I had the right thumbnail and everything, yeah. I clicked on it, and five seconds in, it was just one of them scary fans yeah, yeah, yeah. that pops up. Yeah. It was almost like a, a fuck you for looking for this, mm -hmm. Steve Irwin, and it scared the living daylight out of me, and I never Googled how did Steve Irwin die ever again. Have you ever seen that meme, do you know that one of the cars that's going through hills and all of a sudden, yeah, 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 and yeah. there's an old guy watching it, and it's yeah. like, this guy can have an heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> that was shit scary to play that video yeah, like, back in the day. I'm like, because they were, they, we got them early, didn't we? As we were like watching internet more at that kind of age, because those things were popping up. Like, yeah, it's crazy, man. And, yeah. and, you know, but, world. But, but kids, what they're exposed to now is, is fucked. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I don't think that's going to change. So it's just about sort of getting with it. Um, you know, it always links back to swearing, but I'm not necessarily making or saying it's because of swearing. But look, this is the whole debate of all the, the golf channels I think out there at the minute. They're doing their thing, it's great man, but I, I, boring as fuck. I For me personally to watch, it's boring as fuck, so I find it hilarious to make a funny video about it. Yeah. And, and that was that was it, and like... I, I honestly think if you want honesty and sincerity nowadays, swearing is appropriate. I, I think so, really. I mean, the, the bottom line being is it's just being authentic, you know? it's, just, yeah. it's just being straight. But your your situation is quite unique. It's, yeah. It, how, um, how do you go about that? I don't know. Yeah. Cause I've not dealt with that. I, I, Just put a start of every video. This contains swearing. Yeah, so there, there's it, always that. Yeah. There's always you that. Censor it, then it's. You know, um, there, there, there's always that. It's, uh, from from day dot, you know, I, I've I've never enjoyed uh, coaching kids. No. Uh, I've never been afraid to admit it. I just yeah. I've done it in the past, and mm -hmm. maybe I've just got some memories embedded that it was yeah. just like look. I like young people, you know, yeah. you know, you know there's a difference. You know. I've had some experiences in school that is enough to put people off junior coaching, but then when you get them back at the golf club and you see that progression, and it's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's when you know it's for you, that's yeah. the thing, you know. Yeah. That, that's the difference. Definitely. Um, some people are just, like, born to, to, to like, 
coach kids, teach kids, and you yeah. can tell, like, I'm envious of them. Yeah. I actually think, um, you know, coaching kids is the hardest job in the world. Mm. Some people might think it's the easiest, but it's certainly a lot of responsibility, and it's it's tough, man. Yeah, definitely. You've got to have something about yeah. you. I mean, I've got nothing but envious people yeah. to do it. I, I think, though, at a certain age, like, I've got some juniors that uh, I've got three lads actually, they're like four, five, and six, and I don't think they can be taught. I think they have to get to a point where they eat enough golf balls, they swing a club enough times that they've got their own swing. Yeah. And then when they've got that, maybe it'd be two years of doing hitting balls and stuff, then they can be developed, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got but to be if ready. like a four, four or five year old comes to me and, and the dad goes, Can you teach him? I feel so much more inclined to just say, Just let him go. Mm. Just keep him with a club in his hand, just let him swing, let him do whatever he wants. Yeah. Don't put scores in his head, don't get a golf course in way anytime soon. Because they're punishing places, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. let him do what he wants. Let yeah. him find the enjoyment, and then when he gets to a point when you think he's good enough, when I think he's good enough, then we'll develop technique. Yeah. But for a certain, he like he won't have technique, will he? Yeah, I guess it's just sparking interest. In it, hundred percent. Yeah, because at the end of the day, what is going to make that kid the best golfer? Mm -hmm. Him or her continuing to play the sport. Well, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah. that's what could make him the best. Is, yeah. is their willingness to want to improve, yeah. and the only way you're going to do that is if you spark the interest, yeah. and, and that's my whole thing really isn't it it's mm -hmm. just no one's ever going to watch one of my videos and think I don't want to play golf anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah. I hope not but, um, but on the flip side you know I might even if it's only one or two or ten or twenty or hundred or however many people will will watch it and then we'll think oh I'll give it another crack or you know mm -hmm. just because I know what it done for me so yeah that's how it is mm -hmm. So fuck one more I know, I know. <laughs> getting back to golf then so yeah, yeah, back oh, to yeah. Golf. yeah crack on where do you think golf's going I know we've just been speaking about like juniors and stuff like that, but, uh, but where we are right now, I know I definitely feel as though it's more in decline than it is growing at the minute. Yeah, it's going down the shitter, I think. But I do feel a change coming on. Mm -hmm. I do feel a change. I, I, that sounds a bit cliche and weird. And when I say it's going down the shitter, I, I just mean like participation-wise, and like I, I can always model it off my, my own local club. Like you're, you're sat here, I know. No, I know my house isn't like a mansion or anything, but it's a semi to tap. It's nice. But it's a good area, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good area, this yeah. is at Walton, I don't know if you've been here before, no. but it's a good spot, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's a golf club over there. This is an affluent area, man. There's a, there's, there's, although my mum's not um, <laughs> fucking in the millions, but there, there are people around here in the millions, yeah. mate. They're on dough. And there's a club around there that has 100 members, mm. one of which is me. <laughs> um, like, that place should be thriving, mm. but it's just not. And yeah. since I've been there from day dot, it's got quieter and quieter and quieter yeah. and quieter. And it's been the case at all the other clubs I've been at. It's been the case from all the people I've heard, what I've seen, and, and, and just all around sort of, to be honest, it's exposure. Like, uh, I do think something needs to change, and uh, I do feel something happening as well at the same time. It's, it's, yeah, it's individuals like you, it's individuals like people I've spoken to, who are going a different sort of route with it. Yeah. Um, it might be like a bit of a YouTube social media rev uh, revolution, do you know what I mean? You know, I know it's not that extreme, but. Well, is it? What are they doing? I, I, I think it might be. It's, you know, I, I, I believe that there are YouTube channels like someone made um, Tyler. If, if you listen to this, uh, it's an American lad I played with over there in the states. He he made a good point. He said the biggest golf YouTube channel is Me and My Golf, and they're on half a million or something like that. Yeah. Think, around there, subscribers. He said, man, they're like. Apparently there are like frisbee channels with more than that, mm -hmm. with in the millions. Yeah. Apparently there are like you know dodgeball channels. Yeah. <laughs> these, these these sports with fuck all to them. <laughs> Respectfully. We're about dodgeballs yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Frisbee though. Yeah. Well, what is that? I mean, come off it. Um, <laughs> with 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 more people flying you know flying the flag higher than, than what we're doing the most foreign golf and. That that's a pretty damning figure. That, that that's yeah. pretty fucked. Yeah. Um, you would think that the biggest. Golf YouTube channel would have more than five hundred thousand subscribers. Wouldn't you it? would, you that, you absolutely would. Two three million at least looking at man. Yeah. You would have thought so, but but no, and and that's pretty. I mean, I guess that puts it into perspective. A yeah. Bit. I, I do feel like there needs to be a. Yeah, you know, I never thought about that. That's actually crazy. It is. Yeah. I was the same as you. Yeah. I mean, even a little bit now, you actually think, wow, you know, that, that's not a lot. That's not a lot, but I, I think there needs to be a bit of personality in there. Yeah. For sure, because you just mentioned what's his name, Logan Paul. Yeah. Well, I didn't know him until literally about four, four or five weeks ago, because I was exploring this stuff. That's mm -hmm. why I try and that's why I conduct myself how I do. Because I think there needs to just be. A, I'm not saying I'm a great personality, mm -hmm. but at least I'll try and just put it down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Logan Paul, 
If for anyone who doesn't know that, is he the biggest YouTuber? He's one of. I know T-Series is now the biggest channel on YouTube. It's an Indian, like a Bollywood type thing. Shit, just I mean, overtook yeah. a I'm a bit of a YouTube geek. Wow. Uh, just overtook PewDiePie. Do you know PewDiePie? Yes, I think. Felix, something he's called. He's like got 75 million subscribers. Fuck. Which is nearly as many as me and you, I think, after this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's that level of exposure <laughs> we're looking at. Um, well, well, I care a lot. This Logan Paul, basically. Well, he's on 25 million, I think. He's up there, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and he's just a personality, isn't he? Yeah. He's just a daily sort of vlogger. He started on Vine, actually. Do you remember Vine? Yeah. He were a Viner. Sure. And then as that disbanded, he moved his stuff to YouTube sketches and stuff, and then he developed it from that. So. Okay. That's interesting. His audience, though, is just, I think, primarily kids. You know, because he's a bit of a goofball and he, and he just pisses around. That's his thing, so. Does he swear? No. He doesn't. You sure? Pretty sure. I'd, I'd be interested. On his channel, I'm pretty sure he doesn't swear. He's a bit of a lunatic, though. Yeah. Oh, he's kind of like. He's filming dead bodies, man. I'm not sure he swears. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's an assumption. Maybe that's why it were blown up as much as it were, because he's gone from this, like, kid star who makes content so friendly to then doing something like that, it's like... Maybe, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Maybe. The contrast of, like, dead body to someone that doesn't swear yeah, yeah. is so much bigger than someone that swears to... Okay, for example, if he played golf, mm -hmm. he'd get a lot of people into it. Oh, mate, 100%. He'd get a lot of people into it. Okay, think about, uh, we spoke about Joe Rogan before. How many people do you think Joe Rogan has single-handedly... Got into MMA. Got into MMA. How crazy Or in jiu-jitsu. Ju yeah. Okay, and what is it? Is he the jiu-jitsu guy? No, he's not. not. No. Is he the UFC guy? No, he's not, no. really. That's what he does, but he's not. Yeah. He's just Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and I don't think, you know, this is what, personally, you sort of try and look at directions you can go with, with your channel. I truly believe if you want to get people into golf, he's probably talking less about golf. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's talking less about it. What would you talk about more? Oh, well, I, I'd, I'd pursue things like, I, I personally like, because you know what's quite interesting, man? Mm -hmm is two 23, 24 year olds just sat on a sofa recording a podcast, because at the end of the day, mate, we're not a piece of shit on the bottom of anyone's shoe, yeah. but we're trying to fucking make it, we're trying to do something. Yeah. I don't know what your personal aspirations are. Well, yeah, just to try and, well, like, the conversation we've been having for the last four minutes, I want people to watch my videos and then play golf after. Yeah. This is exactly what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I think has been for golf at a minute? Gaz off Geordie Shaw. Okay. Have you seen his social media following? Have you ever watched Geordie Shore? Like uh, no, yeah, I used to love it. So Gary Beadle is massively into golf. Yeah, I do. Uh, I mean, when I mean, he's got a million thingies and he's tweeting out, I'm going for a game of golf today. How good is that for golf? That is that's good. wicked, isn't it? That's what golf needs. Yeah. You know, that's what golf needs. He should be a cult that. hero and he's known for shagging birds and playing golf. Yeah. That is the dream, isn't it? <laughs> that is where <laughs> I want Literally, like, that's going to get people into it, straight yeah. up. Yeah. And people of that nature as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's... Finding people who, who kids and guests can relate to and, and get them into it and get them into it in the right way. So mm -hmm. it, it's a tricky one to navigate. Yeah. It's a tricky one to navigate because on the one hand, you know, you want to get people into golf, but on the other hand, well, if you want to succeed within the industry mm -hmm. or if you want to, you know, achieve what your personal aspirations are, your niche is golf. Yeah. And then you're looking at appealing to the golfers. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Definitely. So, so that that that's a tough act to balance. Yeah, isn't it? Because golfers are such a niche range of people, aren't mm. they? Yeah. So, you know, there's it's two ways you can approach it. Really, it's like, well, you can only teach so many juniors. Yeah. So, I'm not saying this is the avenue to go. You might have even had a pop at it yourself, but you ask yourself, well, is there a means of how you can communicate online with getting parents to coach their kids? Yeah. Yeah. You know. And then maybe, maybe you have got the reins to swear a bit. Then mm -hmm. you know this. This is what I'm trying to say. Is like, what you're into might not be what you're into. Yeah. You know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a strange one. Like I, yeah. I thought I was into coaching, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. But the coaching is a vehicle. I, I really like sort of, um, you know, or, or making an attempt, long term anyway, mm -hmm. to try and inspire people to have a pop. Yeah. At, at having a go in, in the business side of golf, or, or this, that, and the other. Or even playing it, but having to go at golf, and, yeah. and for me, actually, well, every single bit of coaching I do is is a, first, is a step in the right direction. Not just because it's a lesson, yeah. but it's the whole process of giving the lesson, yeah. capturing it on film, coming and put it up online, because mm -hmm. that is just one more thing where someone who maybe um, couldn't do the PJ, or, or maybe someone who just wants to show someone else how to play, yeah. you know, it can it yeah. gives them. 
that balance, I don't know, but the thing is, I ain't got the answers. Right. I don't know yet, you know. Fuck hell, I have a couple of that. They have some of me, yeah, you might as well fuck off now. You know, I'm just trying to, I'm still just fair enough trying to find my feet. And yeah. I'm fully prepared to make, you know, every mistake there is. That's what I'm a lot like a minute. I'm trying to, like, develop my theory, especially with coaching. Because I, I kind of want a way of how to swing the golf club, but I'm just kind of drawing inspiration from everything that I'm kind of going, people I'm talking to, that's things cool. I'm seeing online, and we'll try to put it all together for my, for my thing. But that's you know what, what I mean? the best will do. Yeah. Um, honestly, and, and um, I'm not saying you're the best. No. <laughs> Thanks, <mate. laughs> yeah, <geez. laughs> but that's what the best will do. Yeah. Uh, listen to um, George Gangus. He's mint, isn't he? He is mint. And you know what? You listen to him on a podcast. Did you listen to him on that Earn Your Edge with Cameron McCormick? Yeah, I did. Mint, isn't he? And it, what so he was saying is the same thing you're saying. He yeah. said, or oh, was it that one? Yeah, it must have been that one. Yeah. But he, I think one. he was saying like, uh, what's you know your your swing theory? And he said like it's not my swing theory. Yeah. He's like I, I've just picked it up from other people. He's yeah. like you watch James Sadlowski and it's all there yeah. for power, for example, and, and this that and the other. I don't really know the full ins and outs, but it's the same with other people, mate. You watch a a little clip of um, Floyd Mayweather, and, and there's he's there. He's he's quoting like uh, I, I used to watch all the greats of boxing. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I used to want to be him one week, then I used to want him the other week, and then at one point I got to the point where I was like, well, I just want to take all the good bits from all he got. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's, 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 he's arrogant and shit, but yeah. in fact, well, who we, we can argue with him? Uh, but that's what you do. There's no one just comes up with something like that. Yeah. It's, if, if, if anyone, any idea that has ever been done ever in the history of, of mankind has probably been done before at yeah. some point. So yeah. it's just a matter of collecting it together and formulating your own opinion or way of doing it um, but it's one of them mate I, it's, it's a tricky one for you to navigate because I'm not in your position but well we're all, all going to find his own way anyway eventually exactly so. yeah exactly I think you've got an alright autonomy and your morals are kind of in check then you know what to do don't you correct you know yeah. what to not do yeah. Yeah. that's probably bigger than knowing what to do isn't it knowing what yeah not to true do. you're not wrong and, and you know it's interesting because actually it's, there's, a, there's a case to be made that actually Human beings don't care about morals. Mm. We care about moral appearances. Yeah, yeah. This is a bit of a like, yeah. mind fuck one. But like the Instagram theory, the one, the way that you convey yourself is yeah. more important to what you think you are yourself. Correct, yeah. and, and, and like all of us personally, we all put our, our own morals quite superior to everyone else. It's really interesting. Like yeah. I won't, I won't go into it because yeah. I don't think it'll be interesting. But there's a great psychological studies they're yeah. doing this shit, and it's actually like hold on a minute. Um, I'll give you a quick example because it's fucking yeah. sick, right? Okay. I mean, I this kind of they, they do this study, right, with people, and they, they lock one bloke in one room and another bloke in another room, or girl, whatever. They say to this one bloke, right, it's a really good job to do it and a really shit one. You're both going to have to do it. Yeah. One of you is going to get the shit one, one of you is going to get the good one, but you can decide. This other guy in the other room won't have a clue who, why he's got that job or who yeah. gave it to him. It's all up to you. I'm just going to leave you in the room, make your decision, let me know, but I'm just going to leave this, this plastic bag with a coin in it. You know, if you want to flip it, you flip it. Yeah. So, what they find is that most people, or the very few select people, will just give themselves a good job. Because yeah. the other guy's not going to ever know anyway. Mm. But 90% of people actually flip the coin. They know because the bag was broken. Yeah. 90% of people flip the coin, but what's interesting is that they give themselves a good job anyway. Right. So, that's what yeah. moral appearance is. Definitely. And that's not appearance to other people, it's actually to yourself. Because mm-hmm. you flip the coin, so you've gone. Okay, this is the honourable thing to do. It's 50-50. Yeah. I'm going to flip this coin and I'm going to get the good job or he's going to get the good job. But if it lands on him getting a good job, people just give it to themselves yeah, anyway. anyway. So, yeah, yeah so, and that's that. just how we operate. It's a weird fucking world. That's me, isn't it? Yeah. Hold on a second. I'm just going to hit stop on this because I can only record for an hour on it. Right. And then what I've got to do is... Um, now hold on. No, I don't want to publish that in brick. Yes, I hit this. There we go. Back in the room. Buzzing. Yeah. Um, Should we talk about mixed martial arts for two minutes? If you want. Did you watch fights this weekend? Um, I, I only watched the highlights. I, I was so, good that Woodley lost. Why, yeah? Yeah, yeah I, I really like Woodley. Watch. I really like him. Did yeah. you see how cool it was that Usman went up to Woodley's mum after a fight? Have you seen I that? I didn't clip? know that. It's Min. So she's there and she's like cuddling him and he's like nearly crying. She's like, it's okay, you're the best person tonight. 
It won't mean. Really? Yeah, it was oh, so fair good. Play. Proper good. Decent, man. And she's like cuddling mother saying, look, all we have to do is back to drawing board, start again. That's yeah, the kind yeah. of woman that you need in your life, yeah. isn't it? That's Wood, Woodley's the shape. She, I, I saw her at the weigh-ins and she was like cheering. And yeah, like, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 36 years of age, but yeah. That's, he knocks people out for a living. And yeah, like, that's like, and he, he hits them hard. Yeah. Um, that just goes to show anyone can have a bad night under, under the yeah, lights. It, yeah. I didn't watch it, but apparently... I think it was like a domination. For it, yeah, it was domination, but apparently he didn't let his hands go. He didn't, he didn't try. Yeah, and, that's what his coach said to him after yeah, that. Yeah, um, and he was, you know, he was good and he was humble in the, in the yeah. post fight press conference and he was yeah he was sound about it i didn't really watch any of john jones I, I, i'm more of a dc I, man so. I, yeah yeah I, I love daniel Cormier. i like john jones kind of because of the badass thing yeah yeah i do but i also so think good. That he is so good but he also sort of like shouldn't be competing i know i know it's, so it's minging, isn't it? yeah it's bad it's like I, it's, it's so easy for people to say that he's the best ever but you can't can you yeah and, and also just from like research that I've looked at in, in like PEDs and stuff like that um, it doesn't matter if he's got like picogramming or anything like that actually if you've used PEDs before um, <laughs> it doesn't just a lot of people don't realize it doesn't just like grow muscle and get you big yeah. so if you put muscle on the the myonucleus from the muscle you put on okay never actually goes right, right so if you're a big gym goer yeah, and you stop going what do you mean if? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> you're a fucking big dog, just like you. <laughs> and you stop going for a long time, okay? But then you go back to the gym, mm-hmm. you're going to put on whatever muscle you lost oh, right. really quickly. Yeah. And essentially, that nucleus from that bit, little bit of muscle tissue you put on never goes. Mm-hmm. So, whatever sort of muscular uh, strength and endurance John Jones picked up from PEDs. He will find it again. Yeah, he'll still, yeah. he won't maybe have it all, but he'll still have it. But yeah. also it trains your like, neuromuscular system. Mm-hmm. So like you can re- rehearse patterns a lot more efficiently on steps oh, right. than you can. Okay, so, oh, that's crazy, that. yeah, so if that's you're right. doing bench press or squat, mm-hmm. it's not just how much fucking, how many muscles you got. Mm-hmm. It's actually rehearsing that, just like the golf swing, yeah. rehearsing the neuromuscular pattern. When it comes to putting combinations together, that's Correct. Thing. Jesus Christ. Correct. That that's up. what a lot of people don't realise yeah. about stats, is oh, that bad. it gets your neurons firing patterns seriously efficiently. Shit. So if the same implications are there for muscle uh, to be made and lost as they're on stats, is it the same with, for, for neurons firing efficiently? I don't know, but... That, that for me is always going to loom over with John Jones. I'd love to see him fight DC at heavyweight. Yeah, I would. Because I think DC will awesome do him and I, and I think it would be a perfect end to He looks better at heavyweight as well, DC, doesn't he? He, he? he looks fucking unbeatable. He's heavyweight though, isn't he? He is, mate. You, you don't go from 205 to 260 yeah, I know. And, and not be a natural heavyweight. Isn't it mad how he's got a big fat belly and his face is sucked in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and his cardio is just like unreal. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. fuck. I mean, I. I don't want to fight him. I wouldn't want to fight anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to fight anyone. I, um, yeah, man, I, I'd love to. I've always threatened to do martial arts. I, I kind of want to do jujitsu, but I don't want a fella's arse in my face. Okay. I did it for a winter. Did you? Yeah. Um, what is it, white belt that you start at? Yeah, I've yeah. got to three stripe white belt. How many stripes do you have to get to move on? I think four, about oh, four, right. and then and it's blue. Oh, right. But so I'm lethal, mate, on the ground. Oh, I want to be. I'm not lethal. <laughs> but the only thing that annoyed me about that is because you, you, you have to train with someone all the time. Yeah. You can't go home and practice jiu-jitsu. I know. I know. That's as the much, fucker. As much as as your mum won't enjoy it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can you? It ain't happening, mate. Love yeah. you, Kamara, man. Yeah, ain't happening. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking never put it to sleep. Just choke you out for five. Yeah. I do choke the dog out. Yeah. <laughs> we have a scrap. He's been so well behaved during this podcast, I thought he was going to lick my face for an hour. I battered him for... Um... That's good. RSPCA, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. please don't. <laughs> no, I ran him ragged before he came in, it's the only way in the morning. Because mm. he'll just sleep like this. Yeah. But normally he's, he's violent. Mate, yeah, he didn't talk about... Uh, what, 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 what's your... What about... What, what about oh, go on, what we've been saying. No, what, have you got... Did you have anything, any questions you want, you want to fire rates? If not, I'll fire some at you. Do you know I've mega slyly got most of them in? Yeah, all right, Sam. Yeah, yeah wicked. I've been proper on the ball. Have I come across as a really nice guy? I think you've been all right, you know. Excellent. My whole thing is like, like I said at the start, it's not, it's not my whole thing, but I want to change perceptions about you, do you know what I mean? Woo! Yeah, winning. I mean, it's never going to happen, but... Oh. 
if, if but I, I mean, like, I don't. You know, have fifty regular viewers watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the fifty people. Fucking Shout out to you, fifty. I love you all. Yeah. But also, I did want to film it, and, and for me to put this on... Have you got Oh, you want me? Yeah? Have you got Oh, you want me? Major. Yeah, I was just going to say what you, what the fuck, like, the backstory is, you yeah. know what I mean? How have you ended up... It's the most traditional doing? golf story ever. So, like, went on a field with my dad and my brother, first time ever playing. Yeah. Didn't hit the ball once. Must have had 200 swings, didn't make connection once. Cried my eyes out, about eight or nine. And how the fuck I carried on playing golf after that, I've got no idea. <laughs> but then, like, signed up for lessons through, like, junior coaching, funnily enough. Got better. Carried on playing, love football, still love football, but when I played I was shit. I got most improved player 2002. <laughs> and then I played nine time to pack in. You can, yeah. yeah. And then got all right at golf. Didn't turn pro off a mega handicap, never won home. Uh, two when I turned pro. Yeah. Do something similar. Three. Yeah. yeah. So not like an outstanding player, but alright. Better at match play than stroke play. Yeah. Being so consistent, it. shit at putting. Yeah. Still so to this day. I'm shit the drive into my fucker. Yeah. Yeah. I've not brought a driver, I've left it at home when we really? played this afternoon, yeah, so I'm three wood in it. I wish I'd have brought it. I don't only three wood. Don't you? No. Oh, I probably not. should get one. We'll share. Yeah, I probably should get one. But okay. Yeah, I mean so what like I mean I said at the start like what sort of brought you here, but um there's the whole I guess, you know, I've changed perceptions of you, but what about you personally? Mm-hmm. What what is it you're looking to to get out of? Not from a conversation with me, but but from all this, all the camera stuff, all all the social media. I, I kind of want people to see me as someone, like a bit of an outlet. Do you know when you're thinking about, do you know when I go on my phone on YouTube, mm. I want to be someone that people look out for his videos. Do you know yeah. what I mean? What's your favourite channel on YouTube at the minute? Have you got uh, one? Uh, Eric Anders Lang. I love Eric Anders Lang. He's yeah. absolutely mint. I think he's, mate, I think he's, he's top five phenomenal. For me. Yeah. Well, I, I'll be honest, he's the only... Adventures in golf. Is just I don't continue. watch all his videos, but he's the only one there the only one to watch. Yeah. I don't watch. The, I'm not trying to say it to put some image across. I don't watch golf videos. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not I'm like the most non-golfing sort of golfer. Yeah. If I'm watching YouTube, mate, I'm watching UFC Embedded. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's <laughs> mint, isn't it? I love it. Yeah. My favourite's the one called the Zach and Jay Show. Have you ever heard of a kid called Zach Olson? It was a kid that snuck into the Mayweather McGregor press conference. No. Yeah. I mean, please watch it after really? it's the sickest channel ever. Really? So they just do stuff that's like stunt type stuff. So on the Zach and Jay show, it's him and his mate, Jamie Rawthorne, and one of the best videos, they went around London using methods of psychology to see how many free chicken wings they could get. Wow. So he'd go into KFC with a suit on and a clipboard, and he'd say, yeah, yeah, floor sign there, it's a wet floor, uh, yeah, yeah, and he said, just because I'm a conductor and I've done the study today, I'm entitled to three chicken wings, do you mind if I am? <laughs> so, and the guy goes, like, yeah, yeah, here you go, mate. He goes, thank you, mate, tell very much. And they had, like, 20 chicken wings across there. I wonder if that would work in pro shops. Maybe. If you walked in as I'm a pro shop inspector. But then it's like, oh, we expect, are we inspecting? It's us that own it. Yeah, it's, it's true, but you could do the, um, uh, when I used to work at American Golf, I used to use... I worked at Direct Golf. Did you? What, oh, what weird places to work they are. Yeah, Commission based golf stores are weird, so aren't they? So valuable, like, I'm so glad I worked there, that sort of thing. So, like. And you know what, I had a great crack. The, the lads that you work with me, Tom. Exact same for me, you know. Hilarious. Didn't necessarily like the company, but the people that I work with. One of my managers, Paul Liddle, I don't, I don't think he's watching, but what a guy. Like, yeah. just proper put me on right track. Barry Wright, right. which his name was. And yeah. he was so sharp with his Legend. time. Not, 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 not like salesman sharp, mm-hmm. just witty sharp. Yeah. To this day, mate, if my mum buys anything golf related, it's Stop from him. Barry. That's why he was so good. Yeah. Because people, tr- he just trusted. Everyone was his mate. It's yeah. just that guy. Everyone walked through the door. Is Barry? In? Yeah. Fuck. Do you know what about what my end goal is? I want to be that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fucking my. Object in a video. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Damn straight. I, I think there's no. Um, because that, that, that's a, a serious point of interest for me, and that's why I, I, I like to talk about stuff that are non golf related. Because really, what you're talking about there, with your personal aspiration, that's non golf related. No, it's a personal thing. That's what I mean, yeah. that's what I'm saying with, with stuff like this. And that, that really gets me sort of cogs going. I, lo- I love hearing that shit, because you shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. Mm. You shouldn't be afraid to, to say you want to do this, or you want to do that, or, or you want to be the biggest golf YouTube channel there is. Mm. You know, I bet that's what. Me and my golfer Rick Shields said, you know, I bet they were like, right, I'm going to be the biggest and best one to do this sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. As long as you're doing it and, and providing value to others along the way, it's, mm-hmm. it's got to be a symbiotic relationship, yeah, isn't it? You know, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, the, but I guess the tail end of that is that like, you're never going to get to those points of, or levels of achievement mm. unless you're giving out good shit. So, yeah. so it's got to be good shit and it's just got to be you. It's, 
that's what I love. I, I, I love. I love shit like that because because yeah. all of this, I, I, I always try and encourage people to just fucking have a go. Because if you if you're not having a go, you know I'm, I'm fortunate enough. And you're uh, have you got any kids? No. All right, okay. You got you got misses? No, we have, no, no. We, we are blessed. Yeah, but that's it. We've got nothing to lose. No, nothing to do. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, my mum's good enough not to charge me. I've, I've got a cracking mum. To be yeah, fair, it's just like you know, I've got a dog here. I wish I had a dog. Yeah, it's got its ups and downs. I need to get him on a course soon. But um, mate, what what a time! It, I, I can I can tell you how much fun I've just had on that kitchen table over there, just editing videos. Right. And I've done you know some good shit. I, you know, I've travelled the world, not the world, but I've travelled a lot. And yeah. I always encourage people just have a fucking go because yeah. even if it didn't work, if this all goes south tomorrow, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change anything. Cause no. I've had such a good time doing it. I've met some fucking yeah. cracking people. Yeah. You know, shit like this doesn't. This doesn't sort of exist in. If we worked in a bank, won't we doing this? Would no, we? no, and it's not it's, against bank workers, like. No, it's not to, against those uh, people like that. I spoke about this before. It's mm. I do, even if I'd never fallen out with the PGA or anything, would I have completed it? I might not have done. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. it was obviously some kind of mismatch because I always had a, a, a business idea. I always wanted to do it, but I just wanted the PGA to get, provide me a bit of credibility with the badge. That is pretty much why I think a lot of people get into it. That's definitely why I do it. And it, and it's a great reason to do it. And, um, one of my closest mates, he's doing it. There's no alternatives though, is there? No. Uh, um, no, uh, no. The, the, and, and this is another thing about the whole PGA. Like, fuck, man. You know, I'm, one of my, like I said to you, one of my closest mates is doing it, and he's not travelled and stuff like that. Um, and he wants to do it so he can go abroad and work. Yeah. Well, how fucking good is that? I mean, international how opportunity good is that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I do a job of a day that popped up on jobs board for uh, a custom club fit here in Dubai, at uh, Trump Dubai Golf Club, and it's like, pff, wow. And don't tie me down, why don't I just get me set up? Wow, why not? Yeah, know. fucking get out of there. That's the one. Um, that vlog will get 200 views, easy. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, <laughs> But, and all this stuff, like, on the podcast now, I barely, I barely talk about golf anymore, I don't know. Mm. It used to be like a, I used to call it like the voice of golf. Is this one of the most golfing ones that you've done? When no, 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 because I used to, it used, yeah. used to be pure golf. Yeah. It used to be pure golf. Yeah. But then I, I, I sort of, just done my own thing, because it's a point of interest, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many young people are going to be watching or listening to this. Probably not many, but mm. if they are, like, it's just, fuck, even if it's just one, man. Uh, or, or girl, <laughs> give it a fucking go, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't have to spunk a load of money on on getting yourself set up with no. with, with a business iPhone. venture. If you've got an iPhone, as many people do, even yeah. if, you know, if you've got a camera on your phone, just start making videos. It's liberating, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's, Film it's, me it in some shots, put it on Instagram. A hundred percent. You know what, as well, golf in Instagram. Mm -hmm. the, the golf's pretty unique, right? We've got all of these other Instagrams. Yeah that just publish golf stuff, mm -hmm. like Golf Gods, yeah. Colorado yeah. Golf Blog, yeah. How, it's quite strange, yeah. you know, because you've got, I mean there's, there's Sport Bible as well, yeah. there are all these accounts to, that basically offer exposure and offer it for free, yeah. as long as you come up with some good shit. Yeah, if I had 100 quid, if you put a decent one in, have you seen that? No. Like Lad Bible, well, if you send them a video and it gets on their channel, they give 500 quid, it's that. modern day you've been framed. Wow. I didn't know that. There's been times when I was contemplating throwing my son downstairs and filming it for 500 quid off you've been framed. That's fair play. <laughs> you would be gutted if it didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be gutted. Um, but it's just crazy to think that there are channels there that just... Their, their channel now is just exposure of other people's channels. Yeah. Do you know what? There's so much opportunity. In, in this day and age, I just sort of think like... There's no excuse not to do it. Yeah. Have you? Do you follow I am Thompson on Instagram? No. <laughs> if anyone listening to this, just go on Instagram and put in the name I am, and it's Thompson spelt without the O, like right. T H M P S O. Yeah. Right. He's a violinist, mm -hmm. and look, for the most part of us, we are. We, I dare say we're probably not interested in violin playing. Not mad keen, no. No, it's it's not it's not for me, um, and I imagine it, it's it's a niche. Put it that way. Yeah. So he's got well over half a half a million followers. What he does is he plays violin, 
and he just gets birds wearing absolutely nothing twerking to him. That is amazing. It is. That is amazing. And it is so funny. <laughs> and you know what? And then it will do like ads on it, and it will just be like some kind of hairspray ad, and basically plays violin over like heavy hip hop, yeah. and birds come and twerk to it, and then they'll use a hairspray. That's and just mean. It is, mate, and it's fucking. It's hilarious. Yeah. You're laughing at the fact that obviously it's just a. a just this normal looking bloke playing violin and he's got these, these hot birds mm. twerking to him. But also you're just laughing at the fact that he's just created this creative space online mm. from nothing through the weirdest niche. And now he's probably got people hiring him out to play violin. Yeah. Maybe even at their weddings, do you know what I mean? It's like a Dan Bilzerian type thing. It's, it's like that, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, it's a sick account. That's crazy. And I feel like it's something like that with, you know, with golf. It, yeah. You know, and that's what I mean. It's put a bit of personality into violin because yeah. it's funny and it's just... Was there any personality in violin before well, that's that? that's what I mean, <laughs> you know. It's, <laughs> it's just public, uh, private school kids, isn't it? Violin stuff. It sounds a lot like golf though, doesn't I it? I hope there's no serious violinist watching this because I'm just murdering it, aren't I? Well, well it like sounds old. like golf. Yeah? That's, yeah. How, that's how I feel people describe golf. I, I truly believe that the perception of golf is... is the biggest sort of uh, contributor towards the participation. Yeah, definitely. You know, why do I want to do a martial art? Because mm. it looks sick. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> and I, and I, Yeah, fair enough, there's functionality behind it as well, yeah. health and all that, mm. but that sort of stuff you can market with golf. Yeah. Um, fuck, man. It, 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 someone just needs, I don't know if it is just someone or, or people. This is, I, this is why I say I feel like things are going to change mm-hmm. because... Um, it's the same old stuff on there. It's the same old shit. Isn't it? Um, I like that golf sidekick. Have you seen him? No. He's good. He's doing like course management right. vlogs. I um, think you're definitely more Instagram, whereas I'm more YouTube. Yeah, well, that's that's where I'm sort of personally trying to make a turn as well. Instagram yeah. is. How many followers you got on there now? Uh, nearly twelve thousand, but good, but they're not as engaged because no. they're just watching sixty second clips. Yeah, again. yeah. Whereas YouTube. Full on, aren't they? Someone might watch all of this. Please do. If you're watching all of this, you know, to me... <laughs> if you're watching all of this, hello, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Firstly, I feel sorry for you. No, no, but people are really interested in what we're saying. Mm-hmm. If you want, if they're watching this, then they must be interested in what we're saying. Yeah. Maybe they might be dipping in and out of it. It's probably on in the background, but... Yeah, or to a car on way, way to work. Yeah, like correct, that. and that's quite powerful. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. There's, there's only so, you know, an Instagram clip can only be so powerful, mm-hmm. given the nature of sort of, I guess, what we're trying to do on, on, yeah. in the whole thing. It's a fucked up world. I know. It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> and we're in it. Yeah, it is a fucked up world. It's, mm. um, it made 20, 23 is a fucked up age to be. It's so strange, isn't it? I can remember being like a little bit depressed when I turned 19, because it's like, uh, what's this mean? Well, mm. 23 and 24 is weird, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's worse than 19. It's just oh yeah, not not even just because you got a bit older, but it's just like, oh shit, we're supposed to be doing real world yeah, stuff now. Yeah, yeah, it's like transitioning, aren't we? Yeah, and then everyone puts these like these ages on yeah. what you meant to be doing, when you meant to be doing. I know, I hate stuff like that. Though. Yeah, it's, it's horrible, isn't it? It is, mate. It's awful. Like we're gonna live to a like 90s gonna be normal. It is. It's gonna be normal yeah. for our generation. So why 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 do you have to get a house and get married at 30? Uh, why is it 30 is this this milestone age where we have to be do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Fuck me. Um, you know, I want I want to be nailed an insta hose <laughs> Maybe not, but you know yeah. you know, there's just so much to be done and yeah. I guess, you know, a lot of people doing a PJ for example are quite young. Mm-hmm. And if you can get it done early on, that's good because at least then you've got it. Obviously you did it, you must have done it quite young. What, 18, 19? I wow, think. I mean I had like one year out after six form and yeah. then did it, so. But even that's worked in sharp. Yeah. So. It's, but you've done it mm. and you've got it and, and then and now it's like, now you're just a fucking big wild world now, aren't you? Mm. It's a master page, it's a hard age to be. Right? Yeah. Where you just come out of uni or you've just done your PGA and it's like, right, I've got this qualification, where, shit, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what now? Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's tough, man. Yeah. And, and if you can find something that you, you're half interested about, Fuck me, it might even be golf. It might not be, it might be fucking yeah. archery or ping pong. 
But why did we get into ping pong? <laughs> Do you like ping pong? What a game. <laughs> it's so fast, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's not, I won't think that I just love to be a cat. Yeah, Table it's tennis. a holiday game to me. It is a little bit, isn't it's, it? Always... Imagine if you were that guy though in your local community that was like the ping pong guy. Because at a minute I'm a bit like the golf guy. You know, if people like who I went to school yeah. or in pub, they yeah. talk about having lessons, it's like I'm, I'm You're the kind golf of that person, yeah. yeah. Do you know Jack who like, lives up and it's like, alright, I'll, I'll go and see him for a bit. So. Yeah. If you were the ping pong guy, that's life goals, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I can make clean up, back yeah. out. Friday, Saturday night, if you're, if you're the ping pong guy. <laughs> You're cleaning up. <laughs> you want a ping pong girl, would you? Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, there might be a Dan Bill's in of the ping pong world. Maybe. Fuck me, you, you, know, you never know. It's, but what has, you know, so even you touched on it before this, you said that locally, mm-hmm. you've personally seen business from what you've done yeah. online. Yeah. yeah, friends, school, my dad is a pub goer, yeah. so he's, he's got friends that are like getting into golf. Yeah. That's it. That's and, and, and is it what, a case of, do you think it's just a talking point that you're doing stuff online? Or Possibly. do you think people are watching it and think, actually, you know? Yeah, it's like a, a combination of online stuff and word of mouth stuff. Yeah. So, like, our Jack, they see, is, is, oh, you start playing, yeah, I can't even three what just go and see him for five yeah. minutes, you know what I mean? I, like, I buzz off stuff like that. That's sick. When I get a Facebook message saying, hey, look, your dad's told me that you're doing so and so, could you put me in? It's like, yes. So, do you love coaching? Yeah. 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 Do you, you like. Um, do you, do you see it as something that you'll always do? Yeah, I'm hoping in the next couple of years, hopefully, looking to do less shop hours and coach more. Yeah. You know, do half and half. It's a natural transition, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. More more coaching, less shop hours. Yeah. And then, like, do you have any personal like business ventures or anything like that? Not really. Is no. it? Do you think there's something now? Do you think there's something now? Do you think? Having been in a sales environment. I'm not mad keen on continuing in it. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't see myself as a salesman. I think I'm too honest to be a salesman. Yeah. Because you have to peddle some shit, don't you? And I'm not mad keen on that. <laughs> well, you don't, don't you? Yeah, when we worked at a Direct Golf Me, American Golf for you, it's like they tell you there's more commission in a John Letters 3 World than there is a tailor made one. So yes. go and try and sell it more. And I'm yes. like, I'm not going to sell them a John Letters 3 World. But I think they're, they're wising on to it. Mm. I think, um, like, Mark's been doing part time work at American Golf yeah. and he was saying that they, but again it's so down it's down to the individuals yeah. who do the shop. Mm-hmm. He said he, he's he's got full reign to do whatever he wants. He's not yeah. been pushed in any sort of direction. Mm-hmm. And that he said he's turned away he's he's told people, look, don't spend that much, buy this. But from that honest sales point of view, you'd look at return customers. Yeah. You know, when I think about old mate Barry why my mum always goes to see him is because mm-hmm. you just tell it straight. Yeah, and that's one If your mum wants to buy a club, mm-hmm. you're not going to stop her buying it. No. You know, but, but there's, there's the honest sort of rapport of, okay, you want to buy it, she wants to spend money on a club. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, innit? Then selling someone a club. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to spend money on a club, then regardless if it gives, us, gives them two extra yards or 20 extra yards, it's yeah. like, well, they're there and they're looking to spend money. That's it. Let's just get the best one you got. How yeah. rare is it that you find someone that don't want to buy a club that then buys a club? They always win with, in, in, with them intentions, don't they? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and it, But I guess it's the people who are on the fence of like, oh, do I or don't I? Sometimes just an, an honest sentence or two mm-hmm. can make that person think, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, no, yeah. I'm sound. I don't need to buy a club. But yeah. then when that day comes that they do, you can be sure as shit who they're going to go to. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's trapped me well before, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the whole thing. I think like investing in, you know, in people long term. Yeah, you know, to, to be honest, quite selfishly, if I'm sat here, you know, you might be under the illusion that I'm quite a nice guy, and you think, well, you know, you know what? Despite what people say, I think it's actually <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, you know, one day, you might go, well, you know, whatever. Fucking, I don't know. If if, <laughs> if I even offer you some kind of small exposure, you might, you might just be like the thought that counts, sort of thing. Yeah. You might be like, you know, he let me into the house. He, we had a coffee, you, you, you know, the dog was on the sofa. Yeah. You know, if you go bang on, on the internet tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, mate. In, 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 you will be my favourite person ever. You know, it's crazy, isn't do it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that there's, yeah. you got a long term wise, yeah. you're invested in yourself, mm-hmm. but then you're investing it. It's not like there's hidden intentions. It's you're doing it, doing the right shit. Yeah, um, yeah this is it. I, I have to come down here to go viral. I've come down here to talk to you, to see what you're like, to see your views on golf. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, it's it, it all links back to the same thing. It's, yeah. it's just getting that relationship between, you know, mm-hmm. business, doing whatever it is you want to do and actually giving a fuck about it. And, and I think from what you do on YouTube and why you get lessons locally from it, 
happen is, to be quite frank, you might get people booking in, they probably might, they might not have even watched all your videos, yeah, yeah. but the simple fact that you're doing it yeah. proves that you give a shit about yeah, what oh, you're doing. Yeah, that's a great point, isn't Do it? you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know. Have you ever read um, Gary Vaynerchuk's first book, not Crush It, Crush It? No. First one. But I read the second one. There's a chapter and it says, uh, the whole chapter, he says, there's one, like, the main thing that you have to think with business, what will make you successful compared to what will not make you successful. And it's an audio book because I'm reading it and he goes, this is it. Get ready. Care. That's it. Right. If you well, care, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. then that is the be all and end all. Yeah. Then you'll have the, you'll find motivation from it, you'll find inspiration from it, you'll you'll work hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the only thing you have to do, just care. Give a shit. I'm yeah. that. Well I've seen to talk about this a lot, but it's quite quite enjoy talking about I'm it. I'm on treadmill know? listening, I'm like, right, this is the chapter, he's like banging on about it and then he just goes care and I'm like Fuck. <laughs> I have to go down like two levels. I'm, like, I'm not ready for that. I've not read his first one actually, man. I read his second one. Decent. I haven't read his second one so often. I only read that someone just referred it to me, but mm. um, crushing it. Second yeah, it, like again yeah. for anyone looking to get into social media and shit, I always give oh, him that book. Oh, he's the boy, isn't he? I give him that book. He's you know, been... whether he's cheesy and American is 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 up to opinion. And but he swears. And he swears, but you, you listen to that book, right? So sincere, isn't it? And and that that will, regardless of whatever you think about the book, mm. it will give you the tools. Yeah. That you need to, to sort of at least have a good understanding of social media because I had no fucking clue. Didn't you? Not a fucking clue, mate. That's mad. No idea. That's uh, mad. Until you. What did you study at school? Did you stop on? Did you do? A no, I dropped out at sixteen. So I, but I did. Um, like IT or like that. No, I did. I did. I got a half GCSE in IT. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually really, really good at maths. Oh right. The rain manish. Oh, yeah, probably uh, mild sense symptoms of autism. <laughs> but I, I could, I was, I'm not good at mental maths. Shit at it. Oh yeah. You know, if you give me time table. Oh, right. But like algebra, I was red up. That's weird. Problem solving. Then really good life. The, yeah, the I, I've used like, it a lot like since I left. Yeah, yeah, I use it a lot. So to this day, I'm like, whenever I see like my go to my cousins, it's always like. My claim to fame is the A star that I got on GCSE. Brilliant. Maths. I did shit at everything. That's moon. Or I did bang average at everything else, but I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't like naughty at school. I just didn't do anything. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. like. Uh, Teacher's pet name. I just, I just didn't do the work. I just, mm. I, I hated every minute of school. To be honest. Worked great school, Warren. Yeah, but you know, people always say, oh, you, you know, the best years of your life. But when I think about it. I hated every fucking minute of it. Mm. I really couldn't wait to go. Yeah. But then when you go, you're like, shit, I wish I'd back. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know what you're doing, you're trying to find something to do. Yeah, um, yeah fuck yeah. school. Yeah. If any kids watch it, <laughs> yes. if any kids listen to this or watch this, yeah. stay fuck in school. Yeah. <laughs> stay in school. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, I think you have to stay till you're 18 now, though. Don't you? Oh, you actually might do. I think, I think six form yeah, man. You have to. I quite enjoy six form. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mate, I got an A at A level English. Did you? Fuck. I know, bless. I'm serious, ain't it? That's good. They said you can do PE or English. And you did. I've been a professional golfer, I picked English. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I mean, a bit off topic, but I think they should teach PE teachers how to teach golf. Yeah, definitely. You know? They because they teach kids how to get mortgages. Yeah, because I've got no idea. Personal finance, stuff like that. You go through, like, you learn algebra and stuff like that, you get really good at it. If you were as good, uh, th- what, buying and selling property? You could be m- m- minting it now, That's couldn't so you? That's so true, man. The real life stuff, they don't teach real life like, stuff. Tax is so tax confusing is, yeah, to me, like, so confusing. When I give a wage slip and it says NIC, I'm like, yeah, it is like NIC, it's a nick, they're nicking it off me. <laughs> <laughs> what is that for? Yeah. That's the only sense you can make out of that know. algebra. That's so true, man. But I, I do, I, I really think, because it's just that initial, if you can give someone a first good experience mm. uh, of golf, just like, you know, you get red up PE teachers that give you a sick first experience of whatever yeah. sport it is at school, yeah. then that's what gets you into it at the yeah. end of the day. That's how you, that's how you grow the game, or, yeah. you, know, you know, all that shit. And that's what we're here to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as cliche as it is. Okay. Yeah, I should probably wrap it up there. I'm a bit conscious that I'm running out of memory as well. We've got a curry, isn't it, about here? I might not get a new memory card. Is it uh, a curry? Yeah, far away? not far away. Should we have a trip before we go and play? Yes, yeah, do you want to go for a little bit of a drive? There's a drive through Costa Coffee there, isn't there? Wicked. I'm winning at life. Alright, geez. Good to have it. I'm going to to pretend to say goodbye to you now. Yeah, that's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, sick. Let's um, (laughs) just go to (laughs) Curry's.